Okay, so this is all part of my Indiegogo campaign on things to do with my Conductive Ink. And um, I was looking at something by a guy called Lovell, and he called it his monotherm. It's actually based on patent number 6103054. So if you want to look that up, by all means do. And he calls it a monotherm. And what it is basically is a layer of three materials. Now these materials, according to Lovell, can be lots of different things. Now he uses uh, an aluminium alloy, uh, copper, uh, chromic oxide and the real problem red phosphorus. Now red phosphorus is a real problem because um, it's dangerous and uh, in the US it's a controlled substance and you find people getting it by soaking matchboxes and scraping off the strikers which takes quite a while to get any decent amount of red phosphorus. So it's pretty unusable in its current form but it struck me that actually maybe you could use my inductive ink, uh, conductive ink with it and sure enough you can. So it's a simple thing to make. All you need really, first off, is a bit of copper. Now, I've got a bit of copper tape that I've stuck to this white card as a demonstration, and that's just a piece of copper tape stuck down onto the white card. Then what you do is get a little bit of the ink, and just paint the ink over the top of the conductive tape. So just paint the conductive ink on and leave it to dry. So once that's dry, you need to paint it over again. But this near time, you need to paint it over with something different. And what we're going to paint it over with is this stuff. Now, what this is, is zinc oxide. It's just two parts zinc oxide to one part white glue, PVA glue. And you just paint over with your zinc oxide. And you get a line of zinc oxide in the middle of your ink. Then you take a strip of this. And what this is, is magnesium strip and lay the magnesium strip in the zinc oxide and then press it down. Now you leave the whole thing to dry. Now you don't need to um, use magnesium actually, you can use lots of things and here's another one that I've made and this time I'm using kitchen foil, aluminium foil because the whole thing is based on something called electronegativity. Now electronegativity is a property of all uh, elements. And if you look at the periodic table, what you do is you have a decreasing electronegativity as you go down the periodic table, and an increasing electronegativity as you go across the periodic table. So the opposite of electronegativity, obviously, is electropositivity. So if you go from this corner of the uh, periodic table across that way, then they get more electropositive. So things like hydrogen, sodium, potassium, rubidium, those sort of things are highly electropositive. Things like fluorine, chlorine, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, those things are highly electronegative. Now, what does it actually mean? Well, it means that the atoms are more willing or less willing to give up or take electrons. So something like hydrogen is actually quite happy to give up an electron. So is sodium, which is why it's so reactive. Something like chlorine will literally grab that electron and hold on to it, which is why you get the chlorine ion being a negative charge, it's grabbed the electron, and why you get a sodium ion being a positive charge, it's given up the electron quite easily. So if we have a quick look at the periodic table, it should be a bit clearer. Now this property of electronegativity is one of the reasons things react but it's also one of the reasons things will give up or take electrons quite easily. Now the whole thing is based on an idea by Pauling. Uh, several people have done it, but Pauling is the most sort of like um, well, well known and well used. And we have a look at Pauling's scale. You can see that there's a hierarchy to the materials. Now, when we're thinking about Lowell's little invention, what we need to recognise is that he arranged those leaves in order of electronegativity. So for the copper aluminium one, then referring back to the Pauling scale, you can see that copper is quite far apart from aluminium. Aluminium is about 1.5, copper is about 1.9, so the difference is 0.4. So we have a more electronegative material and a less electro uh, electronegative material placed next to each other. Now, if you look at the Pauling scale again, 
you'll see that zinc, zinc oxide, and the carbon in the ink actually falls uh, even further down that scale. Actually, the zinc oxide is more electronegative than the aluminium, but less electronegative than the um, copper, whereas the carbon in the ink is more electronegative than everything. So we've got two layers here. What we have is an average electronegativity of the intermediate layer. Now, as long as we preserve that order, that is, that arrangement of electronegativities, then pretty much anything will work. So I've used copper and aluminium, and uh, copper and magnesium. And here's an early demonstration one where I use copper, magnesium, sulfur, and zinc oxide. So lots of these things can be used as long as that relationship on the Pauling scale is made. So once all this stuff has had a time to dry, it's time to test it. So here's our um, sulfur, magnesium, and copper one. And if we put those on there, if you can see that, good Lord, uh, that's got a voltage there of 1.6 volts. That's uh, pretty impressive. Uh, that's working off the ambient heat. It's just the, the room temperature, really, is creating that. So that's pretty astounding. And the magnesium one is 1.62. So that's the magnesium and copper. The aluminium and copper one is 0.49. So the aluminium, because it's nearer to the copper, doesn't give such a good voltage. The magnesium, because it's further away, gives a, a great voltage. And the same here, we're using the magnesium and sulphur to give us a great voltage there. Um, and that's the way it is. The further apart these things are, the better the voltage you're going to get. Now, the reference for this is um, Lovell. Uh, patent number 6103054. He calls it a monotherm. If you pop that in Google, you'll find lots of monotherm things. And what I want to do is use the Indiegogo campaign, obviously, to develop the um, three paints required to paint, because we don't need metals. We can use anything that lies on that pouring scale. So what I want to do, I would develop the ink, obviously. The ink's really cool. That's obviously one layer done. The um, zinc oxide's working really, really well. It needs to be made slightly better because it's a bit gritty, so it doesn't need that much, but the zinc oxide is ready. So what I need to do is find two paints for, to replace the copper and the magnesium, making that paint system. So you could literally paint your roof and clip it up, and then a, a sunny day, a warm day, is going to generate you a hell of a lot of electricity. I think that's really cool. So if you feel like supporting me, please do. The link is, um, sorry, it's actually just there. So if you click on that link, it'll take you straight to the Indiegogo campaign. And if you don't, I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you uh, want to have a look at this because it certainly is worth looking at. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And again, I hope you enjoyed it.